Welcome to AI News. My name is Ethan, and I have a special guest today. His name is Vincent Tsai. He is the Republican candidate for the District 22 California State Senate. So, please, Mr. Tsai, uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and which city are in your district? Yeah, thanks for having me. Born and raised in California. My parents are from Taiwan. I'm running for District 22, which covers from El Monte to South El Monte over to West Covina, Baldwin Park, Azusa, Irwindale. It's a long list, so I'm going to go through all of them. But it goes all the way over to Montclair, San Bernardino County, which includes also Chino, Ontario, Pomona, San Dimas. No, so actually, this spot is part of the yeah, district. Yeah, Chino is part of my district. So first question, I see that you were born in 1987. That is actually one year younger than me. So what makes you want to go into politics at your age? Trust me, it was never part of the plan. <laughs> I, for most of my life, I've always tried to avoid politics, just because I've seen that Politicians come out, give false promises, they lie, they only do things that satisfy their greed. They don't actually look out for the constituents. But the reason why I got into politics was because I saw a lack of leadership in our politicians. The same people that we elect that are supposed to defend us and look out for our best self-interest. Instead, they're pretty much throwing us to the wolves. Right now, we're at war with our own government. They're actively going after our kids by trying to get them vaccinated teaching them all kinds of crazy stuff in school. They're trying to take away our natural human rights, such as the right to keep and bear arms, the right to make our own medical decisions. And it got to the point where I just said enough is enough. Something has to be done. So I try to make a stand at work by choosing not to comply with any of the COVID mandates. And I also made myself a publicly named plaintiff on a lawsuit that was filed against LA County regarding the COVID mandates. Three weeks after the lawsuit goes public, I get suspended. So out of the entire sheriff's, LA County Sheriff's Department. Oh, you were a police officer. Yes. Okay. So I, I still am technically a deputy with the LA County Sheriff's Department, but I've been suspended since October of last year. Wow. And I was singled out of the entire department to be disciplined, probably because I'm part of that lawsuit, but also I was one of the ones that was very vocal about non-compliance, talking to all my partners, letting them know what's going on, because none of our supervisors were answering our questions. They didn't have our backs. So there's a lack of leadership at the department level too, at my work. So I decided to step up and fill the leadership void by communicating with my partners and let them know what's going on, let them know that, hey, there's people fighting back. And because of that, I was suspended. And because I saw an equal lack of leadership in politics, after I got suspended, I, I, I was trying to find ways where I could be proactive and bring the fight to the politicians. And I thought, hey, why not take the fight into their backyard and run for office, be a part of the group that confronts these politicians that are writing all these bad bills. But being a cop and then uh, a politician is very different. What do you think about that? Are you ready for the role? What people don't know is that there's more to being a cop than just writing tickets. We're, we play so many roles. Out on patrol, a lot of times we're psychologists, marriage counsel advisors, because we have to, we handle so many domestic violence calls. A lot of times we have to act like marriage counselors. We act like bodyguards. A lot of times, or most of the time, when, when there's some kind of medical emergency, we're the first ones on scene before the fire department. So we have to be paramedics. On a lot of calls, we have to be lawyers because there's so many different ways um, you can get tripped up. And if you work in the jails, you have to be a babysitter to the inmates. You have to be a diplomat because so many rules are against law enforcement and for criminals and inmates. We have to be very judicious in the way that we handle situations. So being a law enforcement officer helps because I've interacted with so many different types of people. I've had to find solutions to problems where there's no guidebook. We have training on how to be a cop, but there's so many situations where it's not anything we train for. So we've got to figure out solutions on the fly. And I think that translates well into politics because right now what we need from our elected officials is solutions. We have all these problems. The world is literally going to crap right now and the politicians that are in office right now aren't offering any solutions. They're just making things worse by further dividing us and coming out with more crazy bills that they want to pass. There are a lot of problems in California yeah, right now. Our education system, uh, drug problem, high crime rate, homeless population, all kinds of stuff. What do you want to change first when you become the state sen uh, senator? The main thing is the preservation of our constitutional rights. So giving the power back to the parents to be able to decide what they want to do with their children's health. The government should have no authority over parents on what parents choose to do for their, their kids. The second thing is the Second Amendment rights. I mean, there's a reason why liberal cities and liberal states are trying to restrict gun owners from the ability to keep and bear arms because a disarmed populace is always subject to tyrannical rule. You look at all the countries throughout history that slowly took away gun rights of the citizens, 
which then led to genocide, killing their own citizens, and after that, eventually authoritarian rule. I mean, you look at China, Venezuela, Cuba, Russia, there, there's a consistent pattern here, and history keeps repeating itself. Not even those dictatorship countries. Canada is doing it. Yeah, they're starting now. Australia is doing it. Yep. Democrats has a super majority in our legislation. Some say that California is beyond saving, but there are some reports that say that there will be a red tsunami this coming November election. Do you think you will have a shot at this race? Absolutely. That's why I'm still in the race. If I thought I didn't have a chance, I would have left a long time ago. This whole process has been difficult. I've never run for office, so this has been a learning process. But the reason why I stick with it is because I believe in the cause and I believe that I could win. And people are tired of the status quo and they're ready for a change. They're ready for new solutions. And that's what I bring. What is the most important issue to you as for now, for top two? The top two, so preservation of our rights and making things more affordable for everybody. Because right now the cost of living is just through the roof. People are having trouble paying for gas, paying for their bills, paying for groceries. And people might want to say that this is a conspiracy theory, but from the evidence that I'm seeing, all this is a planned mechanism to keep people in fear and separated. I mean, the reason why we were so locked down and divided during COVID was because the government was effective in keeping us scared so that we listen to the government because they're the ones that are offering a solution. But the same thing has happened with the so-called supply chain shortage, the shortage of food, a baby formula. There's evidence out there, and I don't want to say anything publicly yet, but I've been seeing things that point towards all this is planned. They want to keep resources from us to keep us scared and so that we will rely on Big Brother to protect us. But we know that the government is not out to protect us. Yeah, I just read the news article from New York Post yesterday. Biden is actually shipping out oil to yeah, Asia so. and uh, European countries. That's a crazy thing. We, we have oil reserves, but yeah, we're giving it to other countries so that they don't blame us for the oil crisis. So the Biden can keep blaming COVID and Putin yeah. for oil shortage. Uh, you said you work in law enforcement most of your life. Uh, that means crime and justice is uh, very important to you. Here's a free-floating question for you. What is justice? Can you define the word justice for me? Justice has to be fair and impartial, and it shouldn't be swayed by any political leanings. So justice is the right result for the right people. There shouldn't be any politics infused into it. So I know people talk about reparations, but that to me isn't justice. Mm -hmm. So in order to have justice, yes, you have to be wronged, but you can't wait years and years and years later and ask for justice. I, I think justice has to be something that's done swiftly and has to be done fair and impartially. Yeah. Our crime is going crazy. Violent criminals are getting released because of our DA, George Gascon. Um, would you say that the police are not doing their job or our law is just really messed up? And can our lawmaker do anything to change that? When I was a civilian, I was with a lot of people too, where, where I thought, you know, cops are bad people and all they want to do is give tickets. But after years of that experience and now being on the other side and being a cop, I can tell you that firsthand, that's, that's not the case. Cops are out there doing the best job they can to protect and serve the public. What can cops do to solve the problem? First of all, do their jobs. Right now, there's a lot of police officers and deputy sheriffs that are scared to do their jobs because of people like DA Gascon. But those are things that Cops are the basic level can't control. So what, we, what cops can control individually is just keep doing your job. If you're doing the right thing, you're good. Now with somebody like DA Gascon, I'm hoping that election integrity isn't an issue and there's enough signatures that are counted that'll recall him because I do think we have enough signatures to recall Gascon. But the problem goes beyond, beyond Gascon. I mean, look at who, who funds D liberal DAs like Gascon is George Soros. So we got to start going after the, the head of the Hydra we got to start going after people like Soros that are funding these DAs and keep him accountable and make him answer for, for his actions. Um, what as a legislator I can do in Sacramento is repeal things like Prop 47. All these shoplifting crimes you see where flash mobs come into a CVS and just take as much stuff as they can. That's because of Prop 47. Criminals know that they can go into a store, steal $949 worth of product and get away with it because it's a misdemeanor. In Sacramento, I want to repeal Prop 47, make criminals accountable for their actions. So the, the, the whole felony has to be over $950 thing has to go. We have to stop releasing criminals back onto the streets. And criminals are just like 
any other human. They, they're, they're worried about repercussions. So we have to provide just punishment for, for these criminals so that we can keep this under control. Because right now, they're just running rampant. Yeah, and I believe that most criminals, they are just weak, and then they are s scared. So once something come up, and then uh, something that can say something to them, they will stop doing what they're doing. California has one of the strictest gun law, even willing to ignore the Supreme Court and make more gun law that goes against our Second Amendment right. Uh, what can ordinary citizens do? To First, you gotta be active politically. I've heard so many people say that, I don't care about politics, you know, politics has nothing to do with me. Well, we're at a point now where you have to acknowledge that even if you don't care about politics, politics cares about you. Every single policy or bad bill that gets pushed through affects us directly. Mm -hmm. So you need to be active in calling up your local assembly member or senator and voice your, your opinion to them because it works. Like with SB 866, it's the bill that Democrats are trying to pass that allow children to get vaccinated without parent, parental consent. The reason why it keeps getting pushed back and then the reason why they had to make an amendment is because of the amount of people that were calling assembly member and, and senator's office and that really has an effect. So first of all, be active in politics. Mm -hmm. Second of all, do things the right way. So the right to bear arms shouldn't require you asking per for, for permission to carry. But because we let things get so far in California, right now we're fighting for the right to be able to carry by, by getting a CCW. Hey, that's the game we got to play now. Ultimately, I want California to be a constitutional carry state because that's how it should be. Free men and free women don't need permission from the government to defend themselves and their families. So what we can do is, as a peaceable citizen, play the game. So go through the necessary steps to get your CCW. And as responsible gun owners, be the representative of all of us. Because people on the left want to make gun owners seem like we're all crazy, yeah. um, redneck Trump supporters, flat earthers that love shooting guns and shooting people. No. Any responsible gun owner you know that's a gun enthusiast or just likes, just likes collecting firearms or just likes the tactile aspect of it, you're going to find that peaceable gun owners are very responsible when it comes to firearms. We respect the power of firearm. We know, how, we know how to handle it safely. We know when to use it. So keep being the shining example to the rest of the world that, hey, just because we own guns doesn't mean we're some crazy gun-toting person that's going to start going out there and commit a mass shooting. No. We're people that purchase firearms for many of us to protect ourselves, our families, and the people around us. So keep doing the right thing. Don't get drawn into the, the emotional battle that the left likes to push on us because liberals like to be very emotional in their argument and they like to create chaos and resort to violence. So just stay calm, be, be logical, and don't get drawn into that emotional argument. If somebody wants to argue with you about things like the Second Amendment, do so in a respectful way and a well-informed way. I, I suppose you are a gun owner before you were a po police officer, right? I actually wasn't. So you weren't. Yeah. So as a civilian, I was never into guns. I mean, no yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so I don't fit into that 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 narrative like the left likes to push. Like, oh, cops, cops, <laughs> and people that that aren't supportive of gun rights are crazy gun owners. I've never been into guns until I became a cop, and then I started becoming more accustomed to using firearms, and now it's just another tool of my trade. And now it's, it's an essential part of my life because I know the power of a firearm. I know why I have one and I know how to effectively and safely use it. So now to me, more than ever, especially seeing how history has unfolded, I know that having a firearm isn't just about being able to have all these cool guns. It's about the right to protect what's ours. Yeah, against uh, enemy foreign. Against against a foreign or domestic enemy. And right now we are at war with our government. I don't know if, if people realize that now. If this is news to you, I'm, I'm telling all of you right now, right now we're at war with our own government. There's a reason why they keep actively trying to take away our guns. It's because you look at what's happening in Australia, in New Zealand recently, in Canada, and you look at what happens when they start taking away firearms. Then you have Australia with their concentration, or excuse me, COVID internment camps. It's a concentration camp. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a disarmed populace. Because there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, we, were, we saw some video from China in Shanghai. They were doing the lockdown. They're, they're not even police. They're not even government official. They just, uh, the manager of the building, and they just 
oh. ram into people's door with an axe and knife and then uh, grab people out and go out and make uh, take COVID test. If they tested out positive, they just arrest them and put them in a concentration camp, basically. So that's what we're trying to avoid as a oh, yeah. American. Yeah, and, and, and that's the way we're going because America is, still, is oh, at this point, we, we are a communist socialist uh, country. If it was a slow transgression, now we're at that point because we have somebody as our president that's directly tied, that does business with the CCP in China. Our own governor and the highest levels of our California legislators all have ties to the CCP. You look at Newsom, Pelosi, Feinstein, all have decades of dealings with the CCP. Up north, Justin Trudeau and his father have, have had a relationship with the CCP for years. Right now, that's very likely to be in our future if we don't put a stop to this right now. Yeah, it's very important. And this is a turning point. It is. And just think about it. Uh, America is still the freest country on Earth. And it's still the best country with the most freedom and most right human rights on Earth. And we're doing really bad right now. So this is taking all, all the other countries. Yeah, what we're doing is, is, is we're disrespecting all the veterans that have fought over the years to defend our Constitution. So all the brave men and women that have died overseas for us to have these rights, right now, their sacrifice is being disrespected by, by people on the left. We just celebrated Independence Day, and you have people on the left coming out and saying, F Independence Day, F July 4th. I read this article from, uh, I think, Washington Post. Uh, it's, uh, it's time this year. Independence Day, let us declare our independence from our founding father. So that is something that Americans can accept and don't understand how they just hate this country so much. And that's what I wonder. If people hate this country so much, why are you still here? Move. Why don't, why don't you just leave Move to Canada. I mean, the, you have a leader there that might suit your needs better. If you hate freedom, if you hate our democracy, if you hate our constitution so much, then why are you still living here in this country? The, the people that live in this country should recognize the sacrifice that have come before us and cherish that and live a life that, that fully respects that and, and makes their sacrifices worthwhile. What made you become a police officer in the beginning? I've always been drawn towards the sheepdog mentality. Have, have you heard of the, the term sheepdog? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've always had that in me. I just didn't act it out by, by being in law enforcement or joining the military. I tried joining the military in my mid-20s. Mm -hmm. I wa wanted to join the Marine Corps, but being from a very traditional Asian um, that's family, me too. They, that's, that's looked down upon, you know. Yeah. This is just a huge generalization, but a majority of families that come from Asian countries they want you to become a doctor, a lawyer, or a businessman. And if you're a cop or if you join the military, that's seen as something that you do if you, you don't have, have what it takes to be a lawyer <laughs> or a doctor, right? There's no tradition of service there. But I've always kind of been the black sheep of my family. Of course, I still follow um, traditional Asian family values, like, you know, um, a focus on, on being close to their family, on having respect for your elders. But I'm also Amer very American in the sense that I believe in, a, in the sense of duty and I believe in doing something that's greater than myself and serving. That's what ultimately drove me to be a law enforcement officer is because it's part of my DNA to protect those that can't be protected. Mm -hmm. I can't explain it, it's just something that I've always felt. Warrior poet. That's, that's why I've always been drawn towards some kind of service, was because of course I like the cool parts of it, of, you know, all the, the, you know, the tactical thing, uh, part of it. I also like the excitement of being a cop because every day is different. I like the challenge of it because there's no by the rule way to do every single thing and you have to be a problem solver you have to be good at talking to people and you have to be adaptable and all those things resonated with me mm. and I just couldn't see myself being like a physical therapist because that's what I originally wanted to, to, to do when I was going to school that was what happened to me too yeah and I wanted to join the Marine Corps and my mom told me are you crazy I'm like no and then my, mom, my mom's like, but they are all crazy. So <laughs> she's talking about all the Marines. Because she's a nurse. So she's like, why don't you become a physical therapist? That's funny. <laughs> That's a funny story. Because I want to join the Marine Corps as, as, as an officer. And, my, and, and then I, I allowed my parents to talk me out of it. And I ended up going, going on the path to becoming a doctor of physical therapy. But probably through that, I'm like, this isn't me. Like, I enjoy helping people. But no, I like... This is boring. I don't want to touch them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm dealing with the same patients every day. It's you know elderly post surgery patients, which which is fine. But I, I just couldn't see my myself doing that for the rest of my life. All right. Uh, do you have anything 
you want to add to your voters? My campaign is a very grassroots campaign. Mm -hmm. I don't have the name recognition that my opponent has. I don't have the money from oil or, 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 or real estate. But that should be a sign. I'm not beholden to anybody. I've had a special interest group reach out to me that was, re that was responsible for G Gavin Newsom saying that combustible engine vehicles will, be, will stop being produced in 2035. And I didn't respond because <laughs> I'm not taking money from any special interest group because I'm not going to be beholden to anybody. I have my reasons why I'm, I'm running and, I'm, and I, I'm sticking with that. So if you're ready for a change, if you're tired of the status quo, if you're tired of your constitutional rights consistently being attacked, if you're tired of paying higher prices for everything, for gas, groceries, real estate, if you're ready for a change, I highly encourage you to go visit my website, to come out to any events that I'm at, reach out to me and find out what I'm about. And if you feel like I'm the person that can bring about change, then I humbly ask for everybody's vote because I can't do this alone. So I can come out and talk all I want, but if voters don't come out on November 8th mm -hmm. and vote and exercise their, their powerful right to vote and make a change. I can't do anything if I don't get the support of the people. Because if I don't get into Sacramento, all this is just talk. Yeah. So I have all these ideas and solutions of what I want to do, but we're, what it really comes down to is voter turnout. Yes. The primary election, we had really bad voter turnout. And if you want to see some change, you can do your part by spreading the word about me and my campaign, spreading the word about everything that you learn about the globalist, the Great Reset, because if people are unaware of what's going on, they're going to think everything's fine. A lot of people here in California still think, oh, everything's fine. Yeah. You need to educate your, your, your neighbors, your family, your friends, and then when it comes time to take action, reach out to your legislators to, to let them know they're not happy with what they're doing. If you want to see a change, come out and vote for candidates like myself in the polls, in person, because we're still having a huge issue with ele election integrity, especially as it relates to mail-in ballots. Yeah. Well, thank you again for coming. Thanks for having me. And uh, let's keep this election in our prayer and uh, share this video and let people know more about Vincent Tsai. Uh, remember that we have a country to save. Our selected representative are not here to lead us to anywhere, but there to represent us in Congress or in Senate or in a state assembly. If we want to change something, it's got to happen at a local level. So uh, please put everything in your prayer. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. And uh, let's win this election together. Let's do it. We can do this.